ओम शांति इज ऑडियो वीडियो ओके वेरी गुड वेलकम बैक टू ऑल ऑफ यू and um let us take a minute of silence in the silence disconnect from all active thoughts bring your focus attention to the center of your forehead and consider yourself to be a point of light peace is your original nature your eternal home is the land of silence param dham nirvana visualize the eternal parent supreme energy and you are seeing the rays of peace and gently come back the physical world physical body and sit on the throne on the center of the forehead You close your eyes you may open it now thank you i know all of you completed the foundation meditation course um for some of you who have never done this it's a new learning and um, with any new learning it does take time to understand and accept certain things and my own experience is the more i practice purity in my thoughts words and actions my intellect becomes starts to become divine intellect starts to become wise and all our old habits old negative traits they are very hard to you know gain victory over them but very gradually they will leave and my own understanding is self transformation is is a tough job being a manager being a director is very easy delegate work you do this 
last questions why have we not done what's the problem very easy but self change needs to become i need to become more humble i need to learn to let go forgive forget and one of the things in the brahma kumaris is the very first lesson is to consider that i am a soul and the very last lesson is also to be in soul conscious because we have been body conscious for a long time and um, it is a journey and um, god being the supreme energy is the father and is also the supreme teacher and when he is a supreme teacher he knows how to teach no there can be no better teacher than the supreme and his teaching is filled with lot of love he gives not he has lot of patience with the children and so he gives this life entire lifetime to bring changes you know in other places you go you have six months course one year four years whatever the education you do but here it is a lifetime journey of changing our old habits and instilling or imbibing divine qualities based on spiritual understanding and spiritual disciplines spiritual practices before i proceed are there any specific questions that you might it might be bothering you from the last week um, you can spend few minutes and then i will uh, i would like to introduce a, a video which talks about the brahma kumaris and the founder of the institution and um, his lifestyle and what inspired and how the brahma kumaris institution got formed um that's a very nice uh, put together video so before i do that if anybody has any bothering burning question you can ask now i i will ask a question so i thought silence was golden go ahead <laughs> no i think my question is more around are we only a soul when we are talking about a soul can it only take a human form or are we also considering like animals as part of like the the body that a soul adopts yeah so that's a good question especially from uh, uh, people from um, you know east and india they have that feeling that you know you have taken so many you know species and then you finally come to a human to take a human birth and uh, supreme soul all the knowledge concepts that we have learned so far was given by the supreme and he says human souls take human bodies only human souls take only human bodies um based on the karma you can see some of the humans have so many you know health issues and we'll feel you know we don't want to lead a human life which has got so much of problems so that is the karma philosophy where um, when soul starts to misuse or exercise negative energy it pays the price and nowadays we see so many souls in the world have so much of pain sorrow suffering anxiety worry is constant fear constant doubt we talk about covid but still people are so busy there's so many things that is going on and i know some of you even to take an hour and a half to give for your own spiritual progress there's so many things that come in and we really don't um 
are not really enjoying what we are supposed to because our because of the negative energy that is there yeah in a short human souls take human bodies only okay any other question yeah i wanted to ask um the last time we met my computer was acting up and um there were four pillars well i don't have my notes with me right now but um four not the four pillars they were the four uh like development subjects and i missed the last one or i thought you said <laughs> Yeah, books. And I thought you said the last one was helping others, but I didn't get on my screen. I didn't get, you know. So was that the fourth book? Yes. I remember. Still your voice is uh, still your voice is breaking up. But anyway, what I put from your question is, the four subjects uh, that oh. we we'll learn here. One is yoga. Uh, one is knowledge. one is um, practicing or inculcating divine yeah. qualities divine qualities and then service you know serve yeah. others too. so there are four subjects okay yeah? and okay. i want to explore more okay about, that's what i wanted to know yeah so i'm going to explore more about the um, spiritual uh, study and in the different four compartments um that we all explore every day for now i want to play this uh, 20 minute video which is very well put together talks about the brahma kumari's initiation and the founder of the institution um brahma baba and his journey and uh, how supreme soul uses him to give this knowledge so let us all watch this i will play initially and then i would like to get your confirmation if audio and video is okay Are you able to hear the audio? Good. Yes. Wonderful. Let us watch this. In the 1800s, the world was filled with change. The mutiny by the Bengal army was suppressed and Britain took over direct government of India from the East India Company. Mahatma Gandhi still lived in South Africa. And Chago had not yet written Gitanjali. In America, the first telephone message was transmitted, and in Britain, the first electric light turned on. Charles Darwin published The Origin of Species, and the theory of evolution was born. Wilhelm of Prussia was proclaimed Emperor of Germany. The Civil War ended in America. and slavery was outlawed in sindh india a son was born to the kripalani family he was named lekraj and he was an ordinary boy the son of a schoolmaster the boy grew up to be a good man a kind man an honorable man he was called dada as a sign of endearment and respect Dada means elder brother. Although an ordinary man, he was full of many special qualities. His charisma attracted many. Everyone felt the natural humility and sincerity of his nature. He was highly reputed in his profession. Through hard work and honesty, he achieved a position among the wealthy. 
He was a rare person whom everyone loved. His family, his friends, his neighbors, his business contacts, everyone. He was married and had children. He lived with his family in a community in which he was highly regarded. He was an ordinary human being fulfilling his duties and responsibilities with honesty and love. He was a jeweler, a successful businessman of diamonds and precious jewels. The kings and maharajas of the native states of India as well as the British Viceroy became his clients and close friends. His pure nature and conduct won the trust of the royals. He was invited to the royal court functions and was offered the utmost respect. Thank you. He was a great devotee. Just like most of us, he believed in a higher presence and had a sincere wish to reach him. As a seeker of truth, he encountered many scholars whose advice he sought and respected. He set aside time to go on pilgrimages. His philanthropy and charitable activities were very well known. By now, it was 1936 and he had turned 60. Although the thought of retiring did cross his mind, he decided to go on with his business for a few more years. One day, the light touched him and entered his mind. In time, he learned that this light was not his. This light was other, and it came from some distant place where the rules of physics hung balanced, and time meant something else entirely. He experienced a sense of heightened perception, a new clarity of mind and vision. He went beyond all consciousness of his body. He was a pure soul, pure light afloat in an ocean of bliss. He had a vision of the eternal form of the Supreme Soul, a point of light. And then he saw a divine vision of total transformation of the old world and an establishment of a new world, a golden aged world, a land of total purity, peace, happiness and prosperity. The light revealed himself as the Supreme Soul, the Supreme Father, the Supreme Light, Shiva. The light said to him, Nijananda Swarupam Shivoham Shivoham The ever blissful one, I am Shiva, I am Shiva. Jnana Swarupam Shivoham Shivoham The Knowledgeful One, I am Shiva, I am Shiva. Prakasha Swarupam Shivoham Shivoham The Supreme Light, I am Shiva, I am Shiva. All of this did change him. However, he did not understand the depth of anything. It laid a new understanding gently in his mind and he saw things he never thought he would see. He learnt about eternity and immortality and consciousness. Things that seemed important no longer mattered and he gave away his old life and the things that went with it. Unusual things began to happen when he would look at people, some of them would have visions of paradise or of a divine being. 
to understand all that was happening, he took leave from business and spent long hours in solitude, thinking of the light and what was being said to him. Finally, he understood that the Supreme Father was guiding him to do all this in preparation for his future role. He started to understand slowly that God had descended and taken support of his body to give knowledge of Raj Yoga and perform divine actions to establish a new world once again. The Supreme Light changed Tada's name to Brahma Baba. Brahma Baba's self-identity also transformed to that of a father and he started to relate to everyone as his children. Brahma Baba realized at last there is only one Sadguru, the true Guru, and that is God Himself, the Supreme Soul. Only the one Supreme Soul can be the bestower of divine knowledge and a divine intellect. Only that one soul can be the purifier, the ocean of bliss. The Supreme Soul is the one soul that never takes a body of its own and never enters karmic relationship with matter. The light sculpted his thoughts and cleaned away the last shadows what he learned, he taught. The most important of all the jewels that fell first into his mind and then into the hands of the children was connection with the light. And that was the heart of the matter. Those who waited with him to see what would happen knew this was the chance that fate had given them. He spoke of what the light showed him and they listened. Some of them changed their days so they would have time to listen. For some there were obstacles and barriers and difficulties. But they overcame them all and untangling themselves from the expectations of custom they came. After all, fate was calling. This was an age when women in that land were made less and decisions about living were never theirs. From among the ones who came with him, he gave administration into the hands of the women. This was a balance rarely seen in those days and in that place. All of this threatened vested interests established identities and power structures. The leaders who provide a doorway to a new vision from a limited perspective are rarely treated with decency. Such now was the case with Brahma Baba. An anti-party group was formed to spread rumors about Baba's teachings and to put pressure on the government to prohibit the spiritual gathering from operating. Brahma Baba did not flinch. He did not even consider fighting back. And the work of disseminating God's message went on. But the winds of change were blowing. And in the way of the world in that time, there was the dissension of boundaries and countries and ownership the partition of India and Pakistan. Anger and chaos had come to the land and still they stayed protected somehow. But when change finally filled the land and closed the door to possibility, they quietly left that place. In fact, they were guided by the light to go to India and they did in 1950.
three had become three hundred, and they settled on a mountain top in the mighty Aravalli mountain range in Rajasthan, called Mount Abu. The mountain held them safely for years, still being counted. The group started to be known as the Brahma Kumaris World Spiritual University. Brahma Kumaris means daughters of Brahma. Time passed, as it does, and the ones who were very young were now less so. But in all that time, they never thought to leave the mountain. They received direction from the light to expand. Because by now the ocean had made each one of them into rivers, deep spiritual rivers. The word spread far and wide in India and through the world. All through this journey, Brahma Baba inspired everyone by constantly remaining serene and pure. He bestowed happiness to everyone by using his body, mind and wealth in a worthwhile way. He fulfilled responsibility towards everyone with soul conscious love. He was always light and his mind was carefree. His slogan was, this is the Supreme Father's responsibility, not mine. He did not think about what would happen or how it would happen. Whenever the Supreme Light gave a signal, Brahma Baba carried out the action. He was never affected by ego or fear in the face of praise or defamation. Brahma Baba provided every facility and comfort to the children. By seeing his untiring and ever happy face, Others took heart and renewed their energy. Although the road they travelled together was steep, though many difficulties came, no one ever gave in as Baba instilled unshakable strength and courage in all. Though he was old in years, he was the most playful yogi of them all. If children would be doing any laborious job, he would come and lighten up the atmosphere. His presence made souls happy. He worked long hours, efficiently performing every type of service. His spirit of service, of humility and dedication became the practical ideal of everyone. He taught souls how to cooperate. Even in the midst of work, he would contemplate knowledge so that wisdom multiplied and remembrance became constant and natural. He demonstrated the method of complete soul consciousness. Baba would take children out for a walk and remind them of the spiritual pilgrimage. He was himself well past 80 years of age, but he would walk faster and more than most of them. Though busy in many projects, Baba used to write letters by hand and with great love. His life became a living laboratory on the field of action to experiment with spiritual knowledge. Brahma Baba became the person who embodied the purity and truth of the Father's teachings and directions and reached his highest spiritual stage of complete soul consciousness and total divinity. As his last moments came close, he became incorporeal, egoless and viceless. He is an example the Supreme Father created to demonstrate the transformation of a soul from darkness to light. On 18 January 1969, 
At the age of 93, Brahma Baba achieved the final stage of perfection. He attained the angelic stage and left his body behind. Like a bird, he flew away in a second and reached the angelic realm in his body of light. His final conquest in the corporeal world was victory over death and conquering of attachment. His final stage was the remembrance of one. No one ever thought of a time without Brahma Baba, but losing him never meant they lost the light, for the light was separate and would never finish, any more than time itself would stop. And still they had a pledge to keep, to keep spreading light until the whole world is filled with light. How many souls need to turn on their lights to attain the critical mass and the whole world will light up. The day may come soon when just one more person is needed. Just one more soul will tip the balance that measures light against dark. In that instant, the world could change. It does not have to be someone with great wealth and influence. It doesn't have to be someone famous or revered. It just has to be someone. All right, that was the, you know, video about the Brahma Kumaris and uh, the founder, Brahma Baba. And I'm going to um, talk more about the knowledge and also the disciplines and the, in the spiritual lifestyle. Was there any questions on the video that you just saw? I think 
want to ask, um, I noticed in the video at some point that they moved to India. Where were they living before? Or were they in Pakistan or? Yes, they were in Pakistan. I thought I, oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. So the university started in 1936 and um, it was in uh, Pakistan. And then in 1950, um, as per the instructions from the Supreme Light, they made, they shifted their base from Karachi, Pakistan to Mount Abu, Rajasthan. And it has been the headquarters since then, since 1950 till date, it is headquartered in Mount Abu, Rajasthan. Okay. Was, was Pakistan India before? Or was yeah. that area also India or? Yes, it was India. Okay. Okay. No Pakistan. Okay. Right? But when the partition happened after the independence, that is when the partition happened. And before that, it was just India. Even Pak there was no Pakistan at that time. And when the Indians got independence, I see. I see. Separated out. And they were still staying in Pakistan after the separation. But after three years, uh, as per the Supreme Light's directions, they moved their base to India. So Any it, other it was already India. It just changed to Pakistan once there was that separation or once there was the partition, you called it. Correct. Yes. Is that right? Yes. After the partition, it became. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Any other question? Is there, is there a center in Pakistan as well in Karachi now? Um, I or... don't think so. Okay, it's been dissolved then. Yeah, yeah. It has been. They okay. all moved out from there because when the Supreme Light gave the instruction. And that's when they're, uh, the remaining from 300, 350, they all moved to India. India, okay. Okay. Yeah. Any other question? I have one question, no offense to anybody. Sure. Why, why is it Brahma Kumari? Why is it a Brahma Kumari? Good question. Um, you know, uh, Supreme Soul, we saw in the um, cycle, right? We saw golden age, silver age, uh, copper, iron, and then we have a tiny confluence age. You remember that um, image? Now, you know, when Supreme Soul descends, his way of working to make a transition from old, that is iron age to golden age, um, Supreme Soul knows, he's the Supreme Soul, he's a Supreme Teacher too, Supreme Father, and he knows how to bring transformation. And uh, one of the uh, things that we have understood is, you know, women have a lot more qualities of nurturing because, you know, they give birth to child and they have that nurturing quality of love care, unconditional, you know, just to forgive, forget. You know, when kids make mistake, they just let go. But on the other hand, if you look at, um, you know, men, they're a little more stronger and then they, they come up with their, you know, ego and they can be aggressive and, um, you know, the negative force could be more. It's not that women don't have the negative energy there, but the nurturing qualities is very, very critical because in the confluence age, Supreme Soul is, is planting a sapling, which is nothing but nurturing, right? So in that nurturing phase, uh, one needs to be very loving, 
caring um, and then having patience, tolerance, which women exhibit that. So Supreme Soul felt this whole transition or the movement from the negative to divine is better done with women than men. And that's why the name Brahma Kumaris. Right? Very interesting, right? And this is the first institution, you know, yes, which it, is. it has been administered and run by women. You can see in any center all over the world, the main instrument in charge of those centers will be women. Everywhere, whether it is India, abroad, doesn't matter. Very rarely you may see 1%, 2% men, but it is completely women who run this. They administer. So that's an explanation. I think that's amazing because when we talk about power or Shakti, we always represent women, female energy. So I think there's a lot of, I think, depth in it. We sometimes we cannot understand, but yeah, I, I like it the way it is. Yeah, yeah. good. <laughs> Any other? Okay, I guess it is no. Um, let me share some, uh, you know, PowerPoint slides. And then I will start to explain a few things. Um, and I'll also get to uh, explore um, the supreme energy, um, Brahma Baba, where he is now, and um, what is our lifestyle, who gave the directions, and how to have spiritual disciplines. Because transition, as I said, right, it takes, it's a slow process. And the more I bring the spiritual discipline, then I will see gradual progress or growth in my own spiritual endeavor. Yeah. So, So spiritual lifestyle um, is, you know, for many, many years, if you remember from uh, Copper Age and Iron Age, as per the cycle, we, we have become body conscious. In other words, soul has lost its qualities and it got influenced by body. And that is when the negative energy of anger, ego, lust, attachment, they all started to come in their thinking, words, and action. And because of that, the karmic accounts account started. There was no karmic account in golden and silver ages, but in copper and iron age, the karmic account started to build up. And that's why we see so many you know, issues, problems in the world today, because every soul is having one or the other negative um, sanskar in them. And that's the reason the soul is influenced by negativity and also the five elements. Okay. So in our journey, to consider oneself to be a soul, to practice bodiless, to have detachment from bodily belongings, bodily attractions, bodily assets, bodily relations, is a journey in itself. Yeah? 
So a few of the things that I want to go over here. Um, one is Amrit Vela. Amrit Vela is, you know, waking up early in the morning because everybody is so busy nowadays. We don't have time during the day to really concentrate uh, to to make to bring any changes or shift in our own selves. Um, we need to make change to our sanskars. All, all the habits that we have been doing, they are all filled with negativity. So in order to change those old habits, early morning is an excellent time. And um, in the Brahma Kumaris, some of them wake up at two o'clock in the morning till five o'clock they will sit and then practice yoga. Some will wake up at two or three o'clock till five and most of them wake up at four till 4.45, 45 minutes to one hour. They practice yoga or meditation. The more time you give for yourself on this practice, the soul starts to get charged. Early morning is a beautiful time where everybody else are still sleeping and you don't have any meetings. You don't have to cook anything. You don't need to send emails. You don't need to have any WhatsApp chats. So all of these distractions are not there. And this Amrit Vela is a very special time where you're able to connect with the Supreme and, and draw inheritance from him at that time, you know, without any disturbance. And, uh, uh, and also from a, this Amrit Vela is equal to the confluence age. You know, confluence age, if you see, it is ending of darkness and then bringing daylight. And this Amrit Vela is also similar. Every day we go through day, night. And when the night ends, there is this early morning, you know, when it is about to dawn. And that's a very, very precious time. But at the same time, um, early morning sleep is also, you know, very sweet. And if you have noticed sometimes, you know, you want to get up at four o'clock and then set your alarm and then you will look at the clock, it is four. And then you will say to yourself, okay, let me sleep for five minutes and then I will uh, uh, wake up, uh, you know, five past four. And you know that what that five minutes will happen. Yeah. Has anybody got experience on that? Yeah. Good. So early morning is very, very sweet. Um, and then uh, at the same time, if you use it for a positive uh, upliftment of positive energy, it can do wonders. And there are many, many, many stories in the Brahma Kumaris who have practiced early morning meditation has helped them, um, you know, change their old habits, their uh, weaknesses, and then become more powerful. Now, many of them have uh, experienced that. And then Daily exercise, you know, just like how the soul is important, um, having good thoughts, positive thoughts, remembrance. At the same time, this physical body also needs to be taken care. And uh, regular exercise, whether it is yoga stretches or taking a long walk, will always help body keep healthy. And the third is the Murli class. I'm going to talk um, more about the Murli class in the next couple of slides. So Murli class is nothing but the spiritual study that we do every single day. There is no vacation for listening to the Murli or reading the Murli. Okay. Murli is considered as a source of income for the soul, for the soul to transform 
it is the source morally is the source whether you want to get rid of um, anger whether you want to uh, develop new qualities morally is the source okay and purity of course purity is um, you know cleanliness at the physical level um at the same time um in our thoughts to have clean thoughts good wishes your feelings for everyone and there is a whole lot of things that are associated with purity which will also be spoken by the supreme in the murli when we listen to the murli every day soul conscious is another effort that we we have uh, traffic controls that i'm going to mention um, with a nice you know there are some timings that we practice to keep reminding ourselves that i am a soul not a body um, it needs that practice every now and then and uh, for the soul conscious right we saw the video of brahma baba who was called dada lekraj before he came into this path and supreme soul named him as brahma brahma baba and he his own experience uh, he even though he is the highest and we follow him his practice of soul conscious he used to write in a book that i am a soul my wife is a soul my son is a soul my daughter is a soul my daughter in law is a soul and then he finished book and then he used to write on the wall as well that i am a soul and whoever he meets he used to tell he is a soul too so he did lot of effort because making shift from body conscious to soul conscious is a, a journey okay even though he has been the most powerful soul and he had to make that kind of a practice to instill the habit of soul consciousness and solution provider you know when we come into the um, spiritual path um, all this uh, criticizing blaming complaining um, those were have been the past but now i wear a hat hat of solution provider think of solutions think of better ways to you know deal with things rather than you know this i don't this person is like this that person is like that instead i find ways to find solutions rather than be a contributor or creator of problem and there is another practice of evening yoga you know when we do our um, work from morning till evening we are tired and um, taking some quiet time in the evening under brahma kumaris evening 7 to 7:30 half an hour every center they practice meditation or yoga and it's also very nice experience so kind of you know you look back on the how the day went and recharge yourself and what are the things that you could have done better and what you did better those kind of things you know you find it uh, very interesting and then evening yoga from morning till evening you are working and there are so many things that are going on in the head and to put a stop for all of those thoughts and then bring our attention to the soul conscious is also a nice you know um, work or experiment that we can keep doing and so that we get better and there is this daily chart that some of them keep but not but not all of them but it is good to keep daily chart of how many hours i was in uh, meditation and uh, how i changed certain qualities in myself and plan for the tomorrow as well
one of the things in spiritual um, study is you know just listening um, we may not retain all the information but when we start to write uh, there is a you know hand the message passes through the hand and then it gets recorded in the soul a um, lot more deeper when writing than just listening through the ears so this spiritual knowledge is imparted by the supreme energy so the more i start to write points of my own development and even the knowledge concepts it will stay in the mind and intellect and then i have the um, i can use my intellect and mind for my own journey meaning i can process the information of getting deeper into those concepts or develop certain qualities based on that okay. reading is again as i said right reading when we listen we may so many things may not sit well but reading it can is definitely better than listening but writing is more you know powerful than all the three and i was mentioning about this traffic control at the brahma kumari center um, all over the world at these times what you see from 3:30 early morning till 9:30 am there will be a song played uh, for a duration of 3 minutes or close to that different songs but it will be for a period of 3 minutes or so and what it means is we are always busy in our activities that we are doing but when the song plays we stop everything at that time and bring our attention that i am a point of light and then i am a peaceful soul and i travel to soul world be with the supreme it is a practice it is an exercise just like i go to gym to do physical exercise i have to keep doing it every day and same thing here if you look at see from 3:30 4:545 early morning is kind of packed back to back now 3:30 there will be a song at uh, it will wake you up wake up and um, and 4 o'clock is another song and then 5:45 we'll have one more song 7 o'clock is another um traffic and then you see during the day at 10:30 there will be one 12 there will be one 5:30 7:30 and 9:30 and some of you who have um, already been to anubhuti i know raj you have been there and you might have experienced um, that uh, at that time a song will be played and the meaning for that is you know we call that as traffic control no matter how fast you are going when you see the red light you are supposed to stop in our street and say otherwise you know we will we can um, otherwise there will be accident there are people coming from other side and if it is red for me i better stop and the same kind of um, approach in this spiritual traffic control and it gives immense power for the soul um to stop you know waste thinking negative thinking if i am having something you know which i am not happy thinking about somebody when this time comes i pause i disconnect from that it is a conscious effort traffic control is one of the powerful um, method that is used at the brahma kumaris for self development and you know put a stop for waste yeah. another thing is the food habits at the brahma kumaris we prepare vegetarian food and uh, no meat uh, no onion no garlic these eating habits will develop 
the power of concentration and help one in meditation practices and of course we need to have healthy diet as well not to eat all junk food because this body is very precious vehicle and when we follow spirituality it is also important that it is our responsibility to take care of our our own body and one of the practice that the brahma kumaris do is before we eat food we offer that for the supreme and how we do it is you can see in the picture middle here she is there is food in front and then here is the soul and mind intellect is part of the soul and in your mind you have a thought that you know food is there for the body nourishment and in this in the soul in one thought you go to the supreme um land that is the land of peace and connect with the supreme soul and then visualize giving his power onto this food in your mind you do that intellect and then this food will get purified because thoughts are like energy thoughts feelings attitude vibrations they all matter so when i have pure thoughts on the food and connect myself with the supreme i am getting supreme energies onto this food and so when i eat the food it nourishes the body as well you can experiment this is very very <clears throat> powerful and um, it will help the body and the body starts to become more pure as day passes by so offering food to the supreme and then consuming the food will purify the food okay so any questions so far on what we discussed okay so let me go ahead and talk a little bit about this murli which is very important <clears throat> and you can pay little attention for this so tomorrow we will um, read one of the murli and you will know how the murli is and what how it will be spoken um and what are the words that are spoken there <clears throat> you will get to have a first experience tomorrow in the meantime some some key words um are there mentioned in the murli so it is good to have an understanding about it before we listen to it one of the thing is in the murli it will be mentioned as baba baba it can mean the supreme soul or baba can also refer to brahma baba sometimes in the murli it will be mentioned as brahma baba then we know that it is very specific to this individual but sometimes if it is just baba or shiv baba then it will be for point of light supreme soul okay <clears throat> and one of the other thing that we need to understand is sakar baba sakar baba means this brahma when he was in the corporeal world he left his body as we saw in the video in 1969 before 1969 it is called as sakar baba okay and when he left the body in 1969 he is called as avyakta baba avyakta meaning he became an angel we we will learn gradually that there is a soul here first that's the first and then there is a body of light there are three layers one is a soul at the center of the forehead then a body of light 
similar to the physical, but it is just a body of light that is called as angelic body. And then the corporeal body, which is made of matter. All of us have these three things, soul, and then the body of light, and then the physical body made out of five elements. In 1969, when this Brahma Baba, he became Karma Teet, meaning the soul became the purest form that it could reach. You remember that bulbs of 1000 watt, 500 watts, right? When the soul reached the completion of its complete purity, then it is called as Karma Teet. The soul has become complete and full in all divine qualities and divine powers. That means that soul will not have any trace of any negativity, no trace of any negativity. He became completely voiceless, completely incorporeal and completely egoless. That is a high journey. Okay, so soul, subtle body is nothing but body of light and then the corporeal body. So 1969, when he left, he left the physical body and the body of light and the soul flew to the angelic world. You remember that the three worlds we talked about, soul world, angelic world and physical world. Angelic world is for visions and there is no talking there, only movements, no sound. And he reached that stage and that's why he's called Avyakt Baba, okay? Now, when Supreme Soul descended or incarnated in his body in the year 1936, until 1969, Supreme Soul used to incarnate in his body. And all the knowledge that we have listened so far and the Murlis that we listen was spoken by the Supreme through the mouthpiece of this Brahma. All that what we are hearing the concept and even the Murlis were all spoken by the Supreme through his mouthpiece, which means he already has his soul, but Supreme Soul incarnated in him. And because Supreme Soul doesn't have a physical body of his own. Remember in the video, Supreme Soul doesn't have a body, but in order to talk to other souls, he needs the support of a physical body. So he used this as the channel and, and he named him as Brahma and he is also called as Prajapita Brahma, which means he is the father of the people. Adi Dev is called as. Then what happened in 1969, when he left the body, his physical body was left here. His soul and the body of light moved, flew away to the angelic world. So in the angelic world, <clears throat> body of light and the soul is there of this Brahma. <clears throat> he has not taken any physical birth after 1969. All other souls who leave their body at this time will take a physical body, but this one did not. And then from 1969, the Supreme Soul still meets us children. And the way he does is soul, Supreme Soul, he's in the soul world. From soul world, he comes into the angelic world and enter into the angelic body of Brahma Baba. They both together, 
when he comes into his body of light they both together are called bap dada okay and these two souls from 1969 till recently of till 2017 they both incarnated in her body the murli that was spoken when supreme soul entered him from 1936 till 1969 and the murlis that we are going to listen to were spoken through his mouth so from monday to friday we listen to the murli that was spoken through his mouth this were recorded from 1962 to 1969 and through that knowledge any human soul can become a deity it has got all the information knowledge needed for an impure human soul to become a pure deity pure soul now 1969 onwards they both started to enter her and they are called bap dada and what happens is the murlis that were spoken after 1969 has his own experience that he will be sharing through her mouthpiece initially when he came he gave the knowledge through his mouthpiece and he became a scientist he experimented all kinds of situation he knows every little impurity in detail and he both of them enter and he gives in depth understanding of every quality every impurity and the expansion of the brahma kumaris um, students increased exponentially in this phase from 1969 till date and there were very less when he was here in 1969 but from 1969 onwards the growth is more than 120 countries now their presence and we have more than 700000 souls of different faith different age group different ethnicity they all practice this knowledge okay so sakar murlis were spoken by shiv baba god through brahma baba's body these are called sakar murlis from 1962 to 69 and that's what we will get a sample tomorrow when we listen i will read that and you will know how those words are and then gradually we will understand the words the meanings all of that and this avyakta murli as i mentioned is spoken by bap dada soul angelic body through her body is there any question on this was it clear is it possible is it possible to put that last screen i just wanted to copy down that last line sure you had there yeah i will is that possible you got it no i don't see it Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay. okay. Let me just. Uh, okay. So the. Uh, 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 okay. Okay. Yes. That's all. Thank you. Sure. Thank no, you. No okay. okay. Thank you. Thank sure. you. Anybody has any. question or you didn't understand something on this
So what happened after 2017? You said until 2017. Oh, okay. So 2017, you know, let me put the picture back again and then uh, I will tell what has happened to her. You can see this, she is called as Dadi Gulzar. Okay. Her name is Dadi Gulzar. And um, she came into this knowledge path in the 1940s, early 40s. Okay. And she has been in this and she became, you know, instrument for God and Brahma Baba's soul to enter her. And they have been entering in that using this body since 1969. And today she is 95 year old. Yes. So we all have a start date and end date and body as we grow old will start to deteriorate. And her body has definitely um, become a lot more fragile than what it used to be before. So even in 2017, um, she was I think 92 year old at that time. And she gradually, you know, the body uh, became weak and weak. So now she is um, Supreme Soul and, and Brahma Baba, that Bap Dada are not entering her body because soul needs a body which they can use for, you know, performing actions. And when the body is um, fragile, no matter how powerful the soul is, it cannot function properly. So if, you, if you remember, um, we learned, right? Soul, body, both together. When they are together only, you can perform action. If body is not in good shape, no matter how powerful the soul is, it cannot function. It will be stuck. So we are in that phase and um, we will know how next it will play out. Good question though. Anybody else? I have a question. So Bap Dada could still come back through somebody else's body? I don't know because um, Supreme Soul and Bap Dada, they, we will know as per yeah. the Dharma. So I don't have an answer for that. But as I said, right, in order for human souls to become a deity, all the knowledge needed, Supreme Soul has already given it. And then I will give a sample tomorrow. We all will listen to the Murli. And then uh, once we go through that, you know, then uh, if you are interested for the regular spiritual practice, which is the Murli, then we will connect to either our San Francisco or Anubhuti, um, you know, Murli class, which begins early morning at six o'clock. Six to seven is uh, the Murli timing. And um, we listen to the Murli and we learn, you know, daily. We learn, we'll start to learn, you know, every day. And it is so interesting that Supreme Soul whatever he spoke from 1962 to 69 were recorded and they repeat the same thing every seven years. Oh. But that information or knowledge is oh. so complete that anybody can become a deity with that knowledge. It covers four subjects, knowledge, yoga, inculcation of divine qualities and service. All four subjects are covered in the Murli. Only Supreme Teacher, Supreme Soul can give knowledge which can be reused and it is still very powerful years later. That's why Supreme Teacher. I think the Murlis are available um, on YouTube. Yes, it is available yes, on yeah. YouTube. Yes. Available yes. in several places. Yes, yes, it is available. But once you understand the content and understand the meaning, 
then you will be able to relate the murli lot mm -hmm. okay then and it will take many 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 years to understand all of it keep listening to it again and again that's what you're saying right yes and he yes. might have done it in seven years but we would take 70 years to listen to it <laughs> exactly okay yeah in fact i have done the raj yoga meditation course in hindi and oh. i do listen to the hindi mornings okay but this knowledge is so amazing and so vast that we still have classes twice or thrice a week and i try to attend as many as i can sure um, but it's really powerful knowledge and uh, so i thank you for doing this course and because even though i attended in hindi sometimes in english version of it i learn a different dimension yeah yeah you know yeah. so it becomes more clear um, okay. as you go along so thank Let's you Plus also, you know, when we listen to the Murli and then we see so many other people in that and they're also effort making like us. Yes. And one other beauty about this is you will see different age group and amazing how Supreme Father touches everybody. If there is somebody who is a 10 year old, 15 year old, another 50 year old, another 70 year old, they all get the message they, they need actually. It is so beautiful. And I recommend not listening to the Murli on YouTube. I go to the LA oh. Center. Sister mm. Gita reads the Murli. And we have, it feels like a family. Every morning, all of us come together to read the Murli. And it's like a big support system, you know, um, that you feel more connected to Bab Dada through that family. Yes, yes. Mm. And like also, Collective energy is very powerful. You know, there are souls who are new and they need some push or hand holding. And when there is this collective pure pure energy, it will uplift everybody's spirit and then you can fly, you know, become positive, become light. It will help. And my experience on that, you know, looking at somebody, you learn. Mm -hmm. This is not blind. This is knowledge. I use my intellect. Intellect has to become divine. And the more I start to practice, you know, purity in my life, in my thinking, words, and action, this intellect becomes divine. And Supreme Soul is the purifier. He purifies the impure. No human soul can do. Only Supreme Soul can do that. Very, very nice journey, you know. I've been on this path for 30 plus years and I've I'm still enjoying it. It has helped me immensely. And uh, it was very beautiful journey. It has helped me in my personal life, professional life, social life. I become a better person in many, many ways. Whether all those weaknesses and defects that were there, right? It takes time. It is hard to let go, you know, to gain victory over it. But with spiritual study, regular and practices, I have seen wonderful results. So I will definitely encourage all of you to take the benefit and have this self-transformation through spiritual study, you know, spiritual discipline. It will help. Any other comments, questions from anybody? I had one question. So I see, especially coming from India, right? Mm -hmm. Like you have so many beliefs, so many things, right? To to process or digest, right? And like, yeah, I, I get like, how do you, is, is it like just leap of faith that you just trust that, you know, this is factual or like, how do you convince yourself, right? I want to convince myself, right? Mm -hmm. That you know everything this is this happened this is real but like how do you experience that yeah so experience is um, is a main thing right as i said the first lesson with the raj yoga is i am a soul okay the last lesson is also i am a soul, I am a soul. it is a journey because soul is 
not corporeal i cannot see through the physical eyes but i do understand through the mind intellect i can go many years back i can go to different places and you know very well physically you are here but someone goes there and then you start to develop this you know belief and it will start to make begin to feel real and then when you regular practice of yoga you will feel bodiless stage you will feel as if the five senses that are there if you are sitting on a chair you don't feel that you know the sense you will feel that you are bodiless it can it can happen and it takes little practice but it will happen as i said brahma baba who is the founder of this institution he has written books and books together that i am a soul my wife is a soul my son is a soul not easy in the murli you will listen supreme soul saying this practice of soul consciousness is not like going to your auntie's home he tells supreme soul is saying he knows because from copper age and iron age several births we have been body conscious to change one habit it takes time patience you know caring and giving time not to punish myself too much but take it easy it will happen and being in the right company attending this murli this murli is like you know drop drip 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 technology it is every day something will click <laughs> you will see after 6 months oh man i didn't know this yeah, this is good interesting and then you get against see supreme soul method of teaching is very interesting i may not take all the points some of the things may go over my head initially but some of the things you know like a small baby some drip will come and then i like that mm. and it is so interesting that this murli you know sometimes you feel i it is spoken to me kind of you will feel many times because you are going through so many issues and so many problems and then the points will come in such a way that oh it is so nice you know i was looking and then you get a solution and you feel that it has come from the highest source supreme source and then you start to believe the system you start to believe the practices i never used to wear this whites and all i didn't like that for many years you know it is a process and why i change how i change and there's no force but then i realized it is all you know deep self transformation when the purity starts to increase develop you get strong in purity then lot of things you will develop automatically mm. yeah your thinking your speaking your seeing everything will change mm. okay we are coming to the top of the time let us take few minutes of meditation and then we will regroup tomorrow and read the murli sakar murli and see how the murli is um, spoken by the supreme and um, we will go into some explanation as we read so that you get um, understanding about it yeah so as i sit comfortable i am a point of light i am separate from this physical body i am on a spiritual journey i been body conscious for several births now i am on a new journey to think to anchor myself be internalized 
as a point of light. It is I the soul. I do everything. This body is an instrument. I use the physical sense organs to perform actions. I'm a beautiful, pure, peaceful soul. Elevated thoughts, higher conscious thoughts, make me rise above the physical. I start to develop divine qualities. Divine qualities are my birthright. That is who I am. by having a lifestyle of waking up early, spending time with myself and connecting with the Supreme. Studying the spiritual study through which I get guidance, knowledge on what is good what is not, what is right, what is not, where there is profit, where there is loss. I get all the understanding through the Murli. My intellect opens up. I gradually become God-like. A beautiful journey to help myself, to help others is the greatest service I can do. Now is the time to retire from this old world, complicated too much of activities. I wind up from all of that and fly to my home, my sweet silence home. And take rest with my eternal parent, comforter of hearts, My ever loving Shiv Baba. I become still just supreme and myself. I feel charged. I come back to the physical body. I sit at the center of the forehead and I open my eyes with the awareness that I am a soul. I am a living energy. 
as long as i am in this body this body can function i am the director i am the master of this body om shanti